guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Arissa and this is Arissa Rue Art. And it's coaster season. I love coaster season. They always sell really well at the holiday shows and so I am making them just so they'll have that time to cure because you, when you do your resin, after you do these coasters, you want it to cure for at least 30 days before people use them if possible. Um, and so I'm doing it now so I can have the 30 days. And the beautiful thing about these tiles that I make is that they are unfinished and these babies d dry in 24 hours to the point where they've been dried so well because it's unfinished that it kind of just absorbs some moisture out of the paint. I've, I've um, resined them like after a day and a half, two days with no problems at all because these, if I do them right now, it's seven, it's eight o'clock. When I go to bed at 11, they'll be mostly dry to the touch, around, especially around the edges. So, love these coasters. I will put the link um, from them on Amazon, from the Amazon link in the description below. And then um, I think I showed, I showed you guys my last video, but it was really quick. I have these taped off, but you know, when you regu use regular masking tape or anything, it's really a pain because this is still three strips and that's just annoying. Now with these, I have some other people will put the rubber, the liquid latex on the bottom. Not good if you're allergic to latex, don't do that. But also with these, because they're unfinished, when you put the, I've tried it before where you put the latex on the bottom, but these are, these have air that can go through them, which also helps dry because there's no seal there. And so when I put the liquid, tex, liquid latex on it and it closed up this part, the air that's in this bubbled through the um, paint. So I had a lot of bubbles that came up. It was like this was breathing because it's unfinished. <laughs> There's no seal. So, and you know, ceramic and you know, it's a porous material. If I put water on here, let me see. In fact, I'll do it. Cause I have one sitting here and I have some water. Where's my spray gun, you guys? Where did you put it? Did you take it? Where did I put it? <laughs> I have my spray gun. Where did I put it? Oh my heavens, it's always right here. Anyway, let me do this with a little bit of, uh, oh, no, found the spray gun. I moved it. So this is just one that um, has some little spots on it, so I probably won't use it. But you'll see if I spray this, it gets dark because that's already absorbing the water. And so that's what it's doing from your paint when you do that. So you see the little drop there and it won't be a problem for me to paint over this, but that's how quickly this absorbs. And so when you get these unfinished ones from Amazon, and when I bought them last, it was, you, you got a hundred of these for a hundred dollars. So $99, you get a hundred of these. So it's a dollar per coaster plus tax, of course. Great deal to me. I have round ones and I have square ones. Um, but this absorbs super fast. It's unfinished. They're a little dusty when you get them because they're unfinished. So you have to wipe them down first before you tape them. You want to wipe them down, take the dust off before you paint them, certainly. But they are very, 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 very wonderful to paint on. Now, if you drop them, they are fragile. I don't know how many times I can say they're unfinished, but they're unfinished. <laughs> so they will crack if you drop them. They definitely become stronger once you resin them. Um, but... I love these, they dry super fast. I can make co coasters at like lightning speed. The ones I made yesterday, um, I don't like this particular one that I'm gonna show you here because I just don't like it, but absolutely dry to the touch. I just made this 24 hours a day and I, or, or hours ago, and I could resin this right now. There's just, there's, it's perfectly dry and I love it. Now. I have peeled paint off of here because this is house paint base. I've peeled paint off of these successfully. So I'm not gonna get rid of this coaster. You certainly, when you um, paint on it and you paint on a hard surface like that, you don't wanna go and paint directly on here because if water gets onto here, this paint will want to peel. So if you put paint on top of here, which is water, this will peel up. And so you can't repaint it like that. You have to remove this top layer of paint, but it removes very easily. All right, so, whoop, did I spill some? I didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna do some, probably two sets of coasters today. I have lots of colors mixed up because I'm making a bunch of coasters. I think I'm gonna try to make nine sets total. I made four or five yesterday, and each one will have a different color palette. So for my first color palette, I am using a mixture of 
um, Amsterdam copper and Decorate Americana metallics in copper. I am using Cylon cinnamon by Color Art because it's so beautiful. And then I'm using Pearl White by Modern Masters. And this is the order I'll use them, in which I'll use them. I am using Azure Moon by Color Art. They're primary elements, pigments. I am using Pebeo Iridescent, Iridescent Precious Gold. Beautiful color. And last color I'm using on this one is Mermaid Scales. And then I'm using a, I keep it simple when you're making this many coasters, you know, cause we all like to try color, um, different color cell activators. But when this, with this many coasters, I'm using black, I'm using white, titanium white by Amsterdam and oxide black by Amsterdam. Keeping it simple. So I'm gonna do my first one here. I'm gonna do a classic balloon. And so you'll see when I do this, and if you've watched my channel before, you've heard me say I don't like having paint flow over wet, dry sides. So I'm still gonna do that. I don't do dry sides on my coasters either. So I put my little bit there, which is, that's a lot. And so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna go around and wet my sides a bit because I just don't like dry sides. I just feel like the paint doesn't flow exactly the way I want it to. And so I don't paint on dry sides. That's okay that I did that because it will all work out in the end there. So my sides are wet now, put that away and start layering. Bubble. So I'm just gonna do a little bit in the center here and then I'm gonna definitely um, drizzle these rather than doing the bullseye where the colors are just one top of one another because I like all the layers of the colors to be seen. And sometimes when you do the bullseye, you can hide a layer and if you don't blow down deeply enough, that layer kind of disappears into the product. I never worry about these lines that come off of this puddle. I, it doesn't have to be neat to me at all. <laughs> That's why I like this. It just doesn't have to be neat. You just have to play and have fun. And so I'm letting it drizzle out there in the cup first so I can get a little line that I want. I don't want too much gold, but I do like the green that is produced by sandwiching these bluish colors between the gold or around that gold. It's really, really pretty. I actually really like that color palette. There. All right. My black cell activator only on this one. And I'm going to blow this out and spin it out and we'll see what we get. Here we go. It's so pretty and I like it. Oh, that little spot right there, I'm gonna give it a puff and then let it come together. But I never worry about all of these lines closing in on themselves before I spin this out because it will do it on its own. I give a quick check, head tilt for bubbles and I'm gonna do a small spin first to try it. This is the one that gets it flowing around the, down the sides. And so when you do that, you wanna go around and make sure it doesn't create a bubble on the side because it will, and under that bubble, there will be no paint. So I see that it came off of this edge a little more, so I'm just gonna tilt it a little bit that way so it comes off here where that white is and give it a bigger spin, check it. Still no bubbles along the side, and as soon as I get one, because I will, I will show you it. And then I'm gonna give it a spin because this is still too much paint on here. It's flowing too much here. And if you leave it like this, it will dry, but it will kind of morph a little first. And that's what happened to that tile that I showed you. There's too much paint on here. So these looked like those cells, but then they morphed before they dried. So it didn't crack, but I don't like the cell structure. So I'm gonna whip this one and let it really spin out and get rid of as much paint as it needs to. Oh. 
And so you see, it's still got a pile here, but look, it's so pretty. I'm gonna give it one more good spin. I really wanna get as much paint off. It's not um, changing my cell structures yet, so I can still go. Let it fly a little bit. And this also helps it dry faster because there's less paint, obviously, to dry. And so now, you see there's not like a bend of paint around it. It's not like a puddle of paint right at the base of this. So this has enough, I feel like it has enough um, paint moved off of it, but just to be safe, we have one more spin, make sure it's not going off anymore. Because again, my cell structures are not, aren't changing. So I know I'm not doing too much and that is perfect. I absolutely love this. Let me use my color art palette knife. I love this giant palette knife. It's so beautiful. You should see my, my setup here. All these little extra, like when things went on sale, like clearance, and these were like a dollar and a half at Michael's, I bought so many of these paints. I don't even know what they are anymore. Some of them are like pickling solution. I was like, let me just buy them because maybe I can use them and I haven't, but there's so much in them. And so now they're just my stands for coasters and they dry wonderfully. <laughs> they help my coasters dry. So let's get this one up off of my board here and give you a quick up close look. It's so pretty. I love it. I see there's one little white spot in that black that popped. So I'm just gonna take my knife here and touch it and help it go away. Just kind of drag the black into it. There. But that's my first one. I love that so much. And so each subsequent one, I'll speed through so you don't have to watch me doing so many coasters, but I'll give you a good sampling of the color palette. So from now on, we're gonna speed up and you're gonna see me do the other ones in warp speed, the other three for this set in warp speed. Here we go. Oh, you know what? Before I go to warp speed, let me show you how I do the sides. So that thing I did with the sides, that's only for the first one. Because after that, I get my little popsicle stick and all this goodness on the side here. That's what I use to wet my sides because again, all this will come off anyway. I just like my surface to have a good thing. And I'm not pulling out here because this paint from yesterday is dry, but I don't want to risk bringing chunks to it. So just like that, my sides are dry, are wet now. Now, speed her up, let's get going. off a little bit there we go so pretty and so you see where I didn't let me make sure I'm not dripping where I didn't let it come up first those little cells in the middle stayed little because they didn't have the chance to expand but I actually like that because there's a group of little ones over here and there's a group so there's little ones right here there's little ones there and there's little ones there so it actually works really well and I love these so much and now it's time to pick a second set of colors. Now, because I use this scraping stuff to do the sides and I'm picking other colors, I use my OXO uh, omelet turner and I get rid of the last colors paint. And I'll use the white house paint to start the next sides a going. All right, let's go with Hydrangea by Color Art. Definitely Chambord by Color Art. I'm gonna go with, what is this one? This is purple, what is this? Oh, this was the one I mixed. This was like Pretty Petunia with, oh, I don't know. It was another one and it was so pretty. 
but it, I wanted it a little uh, deeper. So that's mostly pretty petunia, and that's a prism pour. And so now what do I do? Gold? I love gold, and I love gold and black. And then one more color, maybe. Maybe we'll do, I don't want any gray. So I'm not gonna put this on the bottom, the pearl white on the bottom, because I don't want any gray but I do want the pearl white in there. So that's how we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna use my darker mix. This is the color I had from my last big pour. This is the runoff. And so I use it, I'm gonna use it for these and it works really well. I did it for a couple of them yesterday. And so I'm gonna do that and give myself a little bit of a border again so I can um, wet my sides. I don't want them dry. There we go. And I'm gonna clean this popsicle stick I was using off because waste not, want not. <laughs> not, not messing up my popsicle sticks. And all I'm doing is putting dirty paint on it. So it doesn't matter. It'll come off anyway. There we go. Blow it down. There's a bubble. Get out of there. All right, so this color has kind of like a sparkly brown to it, which I think is really pretty. Um, because it's black, but then I have silver in there and all manner of golds and stuff from that pour. So it is such a gorgeous base coat and I'm so happy I have it. I have a big giant tub of it and it's gonna be pretty. And I did a swipe on, I'm gonna do a swipe on these next, but off camera because this is a long enough video and I don't want it to be too long. So, but I'll show it to you in the end when I show you all the other ones that I do. Yep, and I'm only gonna use the black cell activator here. Bubble. Get out of there. Oh well, we'll work it out. Only black, I think. Redo. I'm not going to flip the paint because it does then like to um, bubble up a lot if you do that. So I'm not gonna do that. And so this paint does have more bubbles in the house paint because it's just something that I has scraped off my surface. So it incorporates bubbles when you scrape it. So that's part of the reason this one's gotten a little bit more, a few more bubbles than the others. But I really like how it turned out there, but I blew it out differently than I typically do. So I think I'm just gonna do what I know how to do and blow it out the way I'd normally blow it out. Let me pop that bubble. So you see my puddle is moving now because it's got paint under it. And so when you're going to create a bloom and you're not gonna scrape it, you have a little less time because your puddle is gonna move. But let's just do this, this way. All right, that is much better. Blow that down a little bit, let it gather, and then I'm gonna spin it. It's gonna move a lot and fast, so I'm not gonna spin it fast at all for the first spin, because it's got enough on there that it doesn't need to, you don't have to whip this at all. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, now I'm gonna go a little faster, and it's gonna get definitely have to get much more paint off of this one. Oh gosh, it's gorgeous, guys. Keep going though, there's too much paint on there. And then one more, oh, bubble. Bubble, 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 I see you. Get out of there. Let it fill up. There, one more. There we go, oh, I love it. I'm doing a happy dance, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cells. Cells and colors within colors and colors. It's gorgeous, I love it. Let me get my stand there and let's do it again.
Alrighty. Oh my gosh. I love these so much. Now, and I realized I just said that I was going to do some swipes and just do them off camera and then show you in the end, which is actually not very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one swipe of one tile that I'll do next. And then I will turn off the camera, finish the other three, and then come back and show you the final result of all four sets of tiles I will have done today. So I think I'm gonna still swipe on black. You know what, I wanna try, and I've done it before. I don't know if it'll work. And I'm, for this one, not going to um, cover my sides because I'm gonna try to do again a split base swipe. My issue is though that this this color right here is thicker than the white. So you have to be careful with that. You have to have kind of a similar consistency, but we're gonna see if it'll work. And I just did this, I don't even know what colors I'm gonna do yet. I should probably have figured that out. While that's not moving, let's figure it out. <laughs> so I need a base that is a solid color and I think I'm gonna do, I have dioxazine purple. No, I don't, I have permanent blue violet. So I'm gonna do, it as my, do that as my base color. And then on top of that, what will I do, guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's such a difficult decision. I think I'm gonna go with my Violet Rose also. I don't know if it'll be right on top of that because, you know, color separation and all that good jazz. I think I'll put the, ooh, the silver or the white or the pearl. I don't know. I think I'm gonna put the pearl between the two purples. And then, I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this one light and bright. I'm going to do the Peach Dahlia. So two solids and two, um, I'm sorry, two tube paints essentially and two pigments. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try this and see if it works. If it doesn't work on this one, I won't do it. But I want to swipe down the center here. So I'm going to do it like that. And I'm gonna use a little swiping tool, which I have right under me, that pull tool I've been using to poke everything with. And I see another bubble. Get the bubbles out. It's a secret one. This is so bubbly because it's scraped there. Okay, so I'm gonna go right along the center line here. Oop, are we bit? No, okay. Ah, you know, I think I'm gonna change my color on one. I'm, add another color to it. This is thick. It's been thick the whole time, but I've not wanted to do anything about it. So I just, now I'm going to do something about it. So I'm just throwing a little bit more of my min wax in there. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to do the violet rose. And I think I'm going to do the iridescent, inter iridescent blue green and then the peach dahlia. And I'm gonna swipe with both white and black, but you'll see how I do it. I don't like um, putting two colors on here all the time. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So this is what I do when I'm swiping with two colors. I don't know how this was dirty. It was clean when I started and I have not even start, used it yet. So I'm gonna get my palette. I'm gonna cut, load it up with some cell activator. So I am using this cell activator tip to spread this. I am not just pouring freely cell activator here. You don't want to overload it. You still don't want to underload it, but if you see, there's not a lot there. It's not dripping. So it looks like I'm just keeping, I'm continuing to pour, but I'm not, I'm just spreading it out. And so this is how I do it when I do two cell activators. I put one color on here and I dot the other color just throughout. I don't necessarily want it to spread out on the whole thing. So I just dot it. And so I'm just gonna go kind of an up and down motion here. And then let it come off like that. Sweep the leg. Clean that off. And tilt it to one side. Cause I never start off the coaster. So I know that I'm gonna always have to put some of the weight on this side where I start because it's all is dragging to this side. So I always tilt it a little bit back to center it. And then I give it a short spin just to see how it's going to move. You really wanna make sure you know how it's gonna move here. And so you see it's the white, because the white is thinner, it wants to come off first. So I'm gonna tilt it towards the brownish black color. 
and put some of the weight over there. So now the white will stay on a bit more. Just like that. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna completely uh, go for it here. It looks like one of those black and white cookies. Now I really want a cookie, but it's like nine o'clock. Yeah, I don't want a cookie right now. I'm gonna do one more spin to try to get some of this gray off, but there's black lacing in that brown is so pretty. Just get it. So all of that excess comes off. You really don't want it. And so now that's not moving so much, but one more spin just to make sure. Oh my gosh, this one is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And the way it happened is that the, the permanent blue violet kind of stayed up here and then it's kind of ombre all the way down and then a little more of that um, violet down there, but white, lightened by the white. Gorgeous, absolutely stunning. I love this very much. Love this very much. What do you think? I love it very much. I think I said that. I'm gonna go again. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you that this is oh, my first set. I am so thrilled with these and how these have turned out. And these are mostly dry. So that's what I mean. They dry really well and very quickly. And it's only been a couple of hours or so. So, oh man, those colors in this set are so beautiful. And then I think this was my second set there. These cells got a little bit wonky, so I don't know if they'll survive or not, but I really love the color. So you can see that that peach dahlia on there, that is giving that um, glow, that gold glow, because it's got a peachy gold uh, tone to it, and I absolutely love it. Beautiful. I'm going to sweep over. So this is the set with the darker base that I did. And... Uh, just look how beautiful the colors are. They are so lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely colors. Beautiful. And then, sorry about my messy table. Here is my swipe. I absolutely love that. Can you see that dark um, lacing within that brown? It's beautiful. And you see that brown has so much depth because there's so many colors in it. And that's why I mix my colors because anything can be a base to a bloom almost. And so I'm definitely, oh, it's just gorgeous to me. Love it so much. Beautiful. And then this is the final set I just did. Just beautiful blues. It's got the, um, what do I have in here? I have greenish blue by Amsterdam. I have the violet rose and then I have, uh, iridescent blue green by Peveo. And then I swiped with white and dotted with black on this one. So that's why there's a lot more white lacing on this one. But these are beautiful. I love that green throw from all the, um, the irid like the iridescent blue green on there. And then also with that uh, violet rose, you, you get these wonderful purpley pink parts, which are beautiful. And so anyway, Thank you for coming with me along on my coaster journey. <laughs> uh, this is what, five sets here? I made five sets yesterday. I certainly have many more sets to go for my show. And I just wanted to show you, this lacing is so beautiful. Love it. Um, what I made tonight. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Have a wonderful night. Bye.